Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching JavaScript for Beginners Lesson 39 and in this video I want to introduce you to JavaScript events. <laughs> Alright then, so far we've been directly typing JavaScript into this console right here, yeah? And we've been firing that code ourselves by hitting enter when we've written something. For example, I'd write some kind of function here. Now let's just do an alert for now. And then when I click enter, it's gonna fire that code and we get the desired result right there, okay? But in reality, when someone views our web page, we want that code to fire when certain things happen or when some condition is met. And these things are called events. And there's literally tons of events going on all of the time when somebody goes onto your website, right? Uh, for example, if I hover over this logo, that's an event. If I click this little icon, that's an event. If I click anywhere on the page, that's an event. If I scroll down the page, an event. If I hover over that button, that's an event. These things are going on all of the time when somebody views your page. Now, it's our job as JavaScript developers to write code that reacts to whichever of these events that should trigger some behavior. All right, for example, I used JavaScript to write this drop down menu right there. So I said in my code that when this little icon is clicked right there, I want something to happen. So I said in my JavaScript code, when they click this, drop down this menu. When they click it again, bring up the menu. That is two events happening and two actions firing as a result of those events happening. I wrote that in the JavaScript, right? Essentially, I wrote a piece of code or a function that will do something when a particular event happens. Now, how do we write these events? Well, you can write them directly into your uh, HTML. For example, I could say something like in here, add an attribute. Let's just edit this HTML. I could add an attribute here and say on click, that's the event name equals alert. You clicked me. All right. And we could do something like that. Let's just get out of here and try it out. Now we get the alert, you clicked me. So we can add events to elements that way. However, I don't like doing that. I think it's messy. Uh, it clutters up your HTML. I think HTML and JavaScript should ideally be kept separate where possible. And imagine if you had some kind of bigger function that you wanted to happen when this was clicked. You're not gonna to wanna to write loads of JavaScript in your HTML. And again, if you had the same event happening on multiple pages, much like this, I have this on every page, I won't wanna write it on every HTML page. I just write it once in my JavaScript code and then load that code into every page, all right? So it's much easier to write these events or to react to these events in a JavaScript file, all right? So how would we do that? Well, each element that we get in the DOM has these event properties. And there's loads of event properties. I'm not gonna have time to go through all of them. I'm just gonna go through a few here, right? But essentially, how we do it is grab an event out, of, sorry, not grab an event, grab an element out of this HTML code, right? That we want the event to happen to. So for example, let's just get rid of this. Let's edit the HTML. We'll get rid of the event there. And let's say we want to add some events to this H2 right here. Okay, the first thing we need to do is get that H2 element and store it in a variable. All right, we know how to do that. We'll create a variable var and we'll call it title equals document dot get elements by ID. Oops, wrong one. Dot get elements by ID. And then the ID is page title. And now we've stored that in a variable called title, right? Now this title now has access to all these event properties. And like I said, there's tons. We can have click events, uh, mouse over events, load events, literally far too many to do a course on, right? What I am gonna do is leave a link down below to a web page where you can see all those events. But for now, I'll just go over a few. And I'll say the on click event. In fact, if you write on, and you're in Google Chrome developer tools like me, you'll see a list of loads of different events that we can have here, all right? They're all on something, generally. So what we'll do is an on-click event, and that's saying when someone clicks this title element, I want something to happen, all right? So how do we write what happens? Well, we assign this a function, right? So we say it's equal to a function, like that. 
And this here is what's known as an anonymous function because it's not got a name. Normally, we'd give a function a name, wouldn't we? You've seen that when we've discussed functions in the past, but in this case, we don't need a name because we're just assigning this function to this on-click event. And you might notice that we've got this semicolon at the end. That's because this is a statement right here. When we normally declare a function, we don't have this semicolon, but because this is a big statement with the assignment operator, we have to put this at the end. All right then, so let's write this function. So I'll say that when this is clicked on, I want to alert you clicked me. And you can have whatever code you want in here, right? You could have code that swirls this around, zooms it off the page, makes it fade out. You can do whatever you want to do with this element in here. I'm just keeping it simple. All right, so now we've added that event, dead simple, click enter. And that function has been attached to this event. So when I click on this now, we're gonna get this alert. I'll press okay. I can click again, get that alert. Okay, cool, we've attached that on click event to this element right here. And we can attach other events too. Let's do a title dot on mouse over. That's another event. And this is an event which recognizes when you place your mouse over the element, all right? So I'll say this equals a function and an alert will pop up again and I'll say you hovered your mouse over me, winky face, dirty talk there. All right, so let's say this and let's try it. There we go. You hovered your mouse over me. Okay. You hovered your mouse over me. Okay. The click one's still there. You clicked me. Awesome. All right then. So they are JavaScript events. There is another way to do this and that involves event listeners, right? And it's a method called add event listener. Oops. I thought I was typing then. Add event listener. Just like that. And this takes a few different parameters. But for the sake of this course and playlist, I'm not gonna go into this because they still have a few browser inconsistencies, particularly when we're dealing with Internet Explorer 8 and below. All right, so maybe in the future when I do advanced JavaScript courses, I'll include that in there. But for now, I think you'll be fine with these events right here. Experiment with loads of different events, try them out. Like I say, you can have a look at them all in the Google Chrome console by just writing on after your uh, title and you can scroll through them and try a few out. All right then guys, so they are events. If you have any questions about them whatsoever, feel free to comment down below. I'll answer any of those questions. Otherwise guys, I'll see you in the next video.